What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Big Blue in the Bronx YouTube channel video. Please hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or a video drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Also, share this out as well. Very important season is on the way, and the competition in terms of views and stuff like that is heating up. And uh, you know where to find your Giants content. Anyway, obviously, there are bigger stories out there right now. 53-man roster. Who could the Giants claim? Tony Jefferson's a free agent. Are the Giants going to pick him up? I'm not going to focus on that today. I'm going to leave that stuff for later in the week. Um, we'll be back to schedule next week. I'm hoping to get Paul Dottino on next week for just our annual discussion. And then we have uh, the preview on Saturday, obviously before the Titans game. But likely the podcast is going to be on Saturday. I want to wait. Till the waiver wire is finished, IR moves are done, and does Slayton get traded or not? I want to wait that out a little bit, um, and then obviously talk about it on Saturday. But I'm focusing in on one headline, and this headline means more than a lot of people think. The Giants cut Quincy Roche instead of keeping him, and they kept O'Shane Zimenez. Now you could say, look, Alex, you don't know what you're talking about. This is just like the Ryan Connolly thing. It's going to work out, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, so here's my main problem with it. Now, the linebacker room as of right now looks like this in terms of outside linebackers. You got Carter Coughlin, though he can actually transition to inside a little bit. Tamon Fox, Kayvon Thibodeau, Ellerson Smith, Jihad Ward, and uh, Kayvon Thibodeau. So you have what, five, six guys right now? Um, a lot of people were talking about Tamon Fox being cut, but he actually was kept on the roster and was practicing today. So Aaron Wilson got it wrong again. Um, it's not the first time he's gotten something wrong. Anyway, why am I so unhappy about this? Because not just the player, but the fit and what's going to be in the first few weeks. Quincy Roche and... I'll probably show a video. Shout out to Nick Filato. Um, He's got the video footage here. That was from his Twitter. Quincy Roche is better as a, as a player than O'Shane Zimenez. Not just as a pass rusher. Now, in wing scheme, you could probably say, okay, speed rushers are a little bit more utilized than power rushers. You know, you take a look at some of the guys over the years that Wink has used, Tyus Bowser, uh, Matt Judon, you know, whatever. Uh, so people say, okay, well, Ocean Zimenez may be a fit. Here's the problem, though. Week one is up in the air for Aziz Ojolari and Kayvon Thibodeau. Worst case scenario, they don't play. Worst case scenario. Now, I think one of them will play. I think it's going to be Aziz. Uh, I don't think Kayvon's going to play. He might play in week two. But here's where this is an even bigger point than people realize. Quincy Roche is good at stopping the run. He sets the edge, and he's one of the guys that did that in the preseason. Now, was he electric in the preseason? No. Um, he did create pressures. He did get hits on the quarterback. Excuse me if I my voice sounds a little drained out. Uh, still trying to regain it from the Jet Giant game. And better yet, why not use an example from there? Quincy Roche was held on the last play of the Jets' drive where Calvin Jackson caught a touchdown. Grant Herman's just tackled him to the ground because he was dominating. Hell, he was dominating Herman's in the joint practice. But guess what, folks? O'Shane Zimenez, he can't stop the run. He can't set the edge. A. B. Look at what practice, you know, the joint practice in training camp with the Jets. He couldn't beat out a fourth-round pick from the Sun Belt Conference. At least that's the school. Yeah, the Raging Cajuns. Max Mitchell came from the Raging Cajuns. And O'Shane Zimenez could not beat him around the edge whatsoever. But for some reason, and I'm not trying to freak out too much, everyone. But let me tell you something. If we don't have our linebackers or our linebackers get injured in the first, first few weeks, let me tell you something. It's going to be tough for the run defense to do anything. Because, yes, we have good defensive line depth as of right now. They kept Nick Williams. DJ Davidson hopefully will be something. I mean, I'm not going to expect too much. Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, other guys on the defensive line. Justin Ellis, right? He was brought in to stuff the run. But let's just say those guys are blocked. 
And you do have Blake Martinez and Tate Crowder, who had solid preseasons. And then you call Litros and, you know, Michael McFadden. They'll be in the back end. But what if it's not up the middle, but what if it's to the outside? Who do we face in the first few weeks, everybody? We face Zeke in Pollard in week three. In week one, we face Derrick Henry. In week two, we face Christian McCaffrey. No one, no, no matter what the offensive line for them looks like in any of those teams, right? Uh, Tyron Smith is out. Okay, they'll put in Terrence Steele and uh, Tyler Smith or Matt Lewilletsko at the tackle positions. So there's that. Um, week two, yes, you know, slight upgrades on the offensive line for the Panthers, but it's not going to matter what their offensive line looks like uh, if we cannot stop the run. This is a problem we had last year. Now, Quincy Roche, he came in, uh, kind of fixed it a little bit. But what, something I noticed, do you guys remember that Browns game in the preseason last year? The Giants could not stop the run at all because they didn't have a Quincy Roche. They didn't have good defensive linemen. They didn't have solid linebackers that could just get there and fill the gaps and make tackles for loss. You saw running back from the Browns just bounce it to the outside a lot. And who played a lot of reps that game? O'Shane Zimenez. And that's not the only thing that pisses me off, everybody, with um, this cut. We're banking on potential from two fucking years ago. Three fucking years ago. That's my, that's my problem also as well. O'Shane Zimenez has not touched the quarterback for a sack in three years almost. While Quincy Roche, two and a half sacks last year, which is most were actually really more than some of the guys you could say on the team. It was more than O'Shane last year. It was more than some of the other cats last year that, you know, Joe Judge and Cole brought in. I get it. Listen, O'Shane could be a fit because, oh, well, he's a rotational pass rusher. But with Darian Beavers out, with Tay Crowder, may, you know, he may not be here in the long run. In the first few weeks, we are going to struggle in the running game. I hope I'm wrong. I fucking hope I'm wrong. Hopefully, Michael McFadden gets some snaps make some stops, take Crowder the same thing, hopefully he improves a little bit. I mean, he's a seventh-round pick, so you can't expect much. Hopefully, Blake Martinez is 50 to 75% himself. Now, let's back that up with stats right now. You look at Quincy Roche, right? Uh, he was obviously picked by the Steelers last year. We know that. 14 games last year. Um, three of them started. Seven pressures, 38 tackles, two and a half sacks, to go along with five quarterback hits and five tackles for a loss. Okay? That's that's his stat line. Uh, his snap percentage also as well. He played 42% of the defensive snaps. So there's that. O'Shane Zimenez. 27% of the defensive snaps. Also drew an offsides penalty that could... They actually, well, better yet... Played into why we lost the game. Daniel Jones threw an interception in the Kansas City game. So you can attribute that as why we lost the game. But also, O'Shane Zimenez, offsides. Darnay Holmes gets the interception. If he doesn't step offsides, Patrick Mahomes throws an interception. Hopefully, we win the game. Um, but that didn't happen. And uh, it was an offsides penalty. But O'Shane Zimenez last year. 13 tackles. Zero sacks. Three pass deflections. Two quarterback hits. And zero tackles for a loss to go along with four pressures. Really good stats right there. Uh, also, nothing in the running game. 2020, he played four games, started three, and I was shouting it from the rooftops. This coaching staff does not like Oshane Zimenez because they would have played him more than they did. And the biggest amount of reps he saw in 2020 was in that 49ers game what do you know about that 49ers game well they got fucking blown out so they had no choice to put him in there um five pressures zero sacks once again no surprise five tackles a tackle for loss three quarterback hits so also 42 percent of the defensive snaps in 2019 where you know he was somewhat impressive under a, a stupid defensive coordinator who basically copy and pasted uh, Todd Bowles' system, four and a half sacks, one pass deflection, 25 tackles, nine quarterback hits, five tackles for a loss, 45% of the defensive snaps to go along with 12 pressures in 16 games. So you could say, well, Alex, you're overreacting. You know, it's not that big of a deal. I think it is a big deal. 
I think it is. Because you're going to see a lot of growing pains from this team, right? The secondary, it's going to be full of growing pains. And we're going to have to get a corner at some point, right? Uh, the linebacker group. Micah McFadden, he's got some stuff to work on. Tate Crowder, he's the seventh round pick. Can't expect much out of him. Blake Martinez coming off a torn ACL. Austin Calitro, he's a special teams guy, and he did well in the preseason. He's not going to be much in the regular season. I'll tell you that right now. Defensive line, you got Dexter, you got Leonard Williams, you got Nick Williams, uh, DJ Davidson, and Justin Ellis as backups. Okay. Um, I think there's one more guy I'm missing, but who knows? Who cares? And. There's two major things, once again, that come out of this whole thing for the first few weeks. Is if Kayvon and Aziz don't play in week one, let alone maybe week two, week three, and you don't even have to just say those weeks. What if one of them or both of them get injured later down in the season? You know, latter part of the season. Then we're fucked. Okay? If O'Shane Zimenez is still on this roster. Because O'Shane Zimenez cannot get a consistent pass rush on the passer like Roche can, and he's got better moves as well. He's got better moves than Zimenez, and he can also help stop the run by setting the edge. He did that last year. He made our run defense just a tad better because, well, guess what? We didn't have the linebackers. They kept putting in fucking Danny Shelton, and it was a mess. I don't mean to be so animated, but I'm just genuinely worried. We may not look as good as we think the first two, three weeks in the running game. I don't want to be right. I'm telling you right now. But qu- qu- uh, cutting Quincy Roche is a mistake. It is a mistake. And O'Shane Zimenez, all he does, and listen, I don't really want or root to, I don't root for players to get cut. I don't. Because it's terrible. Players have to find other jobs. Maybe outside the NFL, you know, with other companies and whatever just doing some part-time shit but let's be real O'Shane Zimenez usually has a good preseason right he had like four sacks in uh his rookie year preseason he had a sack last year in the preseason and then this year let's see he had a couple of quarterback hits and something is you know also to point out the Giants defensive line and the edge rush did not get a sack. Did not get a sack. It was Trenton Thompson and Khalil Dorsey that got to the quarterback. DB blitzes. So, if you want to be worried a little bit about this defensive end depth, slash outside linebacker depth, if you will, be worried. If you don't want to be worried and say, oh, look, you know what? Aziz and Kayvon will be back soon. Okay. But if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or a video drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Peace out, guys. See you later. Stay cool.